Well, hello guys. I know it's been a while since I've been on here. I've uh, been a little under the weather. Um, just got out of the hospital. Uh, I guess I tried doing too much and I end up uh, trying to help out my son-in-law with something I sh shouldn't have done as much as I did and I end up having a heart attack. So I spent about half a week in the hospital and then recuperating after that. So anyway, we're back here. I wanted to show you this radio. This is one of my pride and joys. It's a Olympic. It's made in Germany. I believe the model number is 5711. And uh, the thing I like about it is it's extremely sensitive. This right now does not have any antenna hooked up anywhere. Yet I'm on shortwave. And the sound you're hearing. At the turn, 21 hours, 40 minutes. Universal time. And I'm a minute off. Um, that's a shortwave band, 10 megahertz. That's the universal time clock out in Colorado. I'm in Iowa. And this is just running off of its own little internal antenna. Uh, take it over the broadcast. The AT&T version has two applications. And it's got an eye tube in it, but from it's not real bright. He is stuck in Lodi. Welcome to Money Talk. Yes, Bob. Thanks for taking my call. I just it comes in thank really you, good, though. It picks up a lot of stations. Guidance. And uh, done very well with your guidance. I've done other costs. You have different you know, mutual funds over the last 25 years. Settings. And it's helped a lot of family members with Dual guidance also. Dual speakers in it. appreciative of it, Bob. And one of the you can uh, of, uh, your program, Bob, is I love just the one down. here. Right this is more like a tweeter and, type uh, speaker I, I want to than to the main speakers here. Because you've really helped me out with them. What I it's a real to nice little radio. Is, uh, I uh, really enjoyed restoring it. Just for safety's sake. Uh, I, I have not done any alignment on it, although I don't think I... Uh, As well as it picks up, I don't think I need to. I would uh, probably run the FM, but there's too much music on there and I don't want to get in trouble. Anyway, that wasn't all I want to talk about on this video. I want to talk about what really you need for basic tools to work on radios. Uh, I didn't want to make it seem like the a lot of this test equipment is absolutely necessary because it isn't. Uh, I just collect stuff, okay? And I love, I love tools. And I love test equipment. I used, for a while I was into really just dealing only with the stuff and restoring it, so. But really, some of the, you don't need all this. Uh, if you're going to work on radios, uh, some hand tools, perfectly fine. Uh, you know, some sort of cutters. I like flush cutters because you can get into things. Wire strippers of some sort. Uh, a couple sets of needle nose pliers, something short and something a little longer to get down in deep spots. A uh, decent little screwdriver. I kind of like these because they're six in one screw. Driver. You can pull them out. You can take the ends out. This is, has the uh, the small bladed, flat bladed screwdriver and a small Phillips number one, and then a number two Phillips on this end with the bigger flat blade. And then if you pull these out, these are nut drivers. It gives you five sixteenths, 
and your quarter inch. Some sort of bolt meter uh, and ohm meter. Uh, digital's fine. Uh, whatever you got, uh, it'll work just fine for checking things that you need to check. Uh, you know, something that you can just measure your resistance and voltage, and this will be just fine. Now, the one thing that I would say, uh, you know, you want a, a decent soldering iron. Now, it don't have to be, you know, the top of the line. This is the low end Hacko. I paid 91 bucks for it. Um, but the big thing about it is it's adjustable. And that's what you want. You want an adjustable iron. You don't want to go get one of them pencil irons that are, you know, non adjustable. You just plug them in the wall. They're like 30 or 40 watts, sometimes 25. Uh, this is 65 watts, which gives plenty of power to do most of the soldering work, uh, except for one like chassis or something of that nature, and then you want something a lot heavier. But um, but the big thing about the adjustable is the fact that if you can adjust the temperature down, you at this point in time you don't know what you're going to be doing. You know, you may be working on some 40s and 30s radios, and that's fine. But if you get into the 50s and 60s, you know, you pick up a little clock radio or something like that, or nice little AM FM radio or something from the 50s or 60s, they're most likely going to have circuit boards. And if you start soldering full power of one of these on that, you can very easily start lifting off the traces on the circuit board. And then you got a problem. And it becomes a mess. So you want to be able to crank it down. Uh, about half the power and to to work on those you know some solder um, solder wick is really nice comes in handy uh, a solder sucker of some sort uh, <laughs> this one actually works pretty good and I only paid like three or four bucks for it um, I got very you know I got a couple three different types uh, other than that you know, you don't really need any more than this. Um, you know, you can get you, um, you know, maybe an utility knife might come in handy. You know, you can pick these up for a couple bucks at your local improvement store. Uh, you know, maybe a little hammer or something else. But you really, you know, this is the basics. You can really work on a radio with this stuff right here. Now, you might be thinking, okay, I get the radio restored, I replace the parts and everything. What about alignment? Well, the first thing that you need to remember about alignment, unless somebody's actually messed with it, most likely you, it really won't be that far out of alignment if, it, if it's out any. Uh, unless you get into the cans. You know, you get into some of these... Uh, IF cans are like these here on the newer radios. These are adjustable down through the center, so they don't have the adjustable capacitors. They got fixed capacitors, and those, you know, you might have to replace a capacitor in there. If you do that, then you're going to have to line it. But alignment of some of the simple, the basic radios. Um, AM radios that you'll be messing with, you know, all American Fives or even if they got transformers or something, can be done with by ear. Uh, tune in a, a local station once you get it all done and working, and all you got to do is then just start tweaking a little bit of the IF cans uh, to get the signal as loud as possible. As far as the oscillator, adjustment. The oscillator adjustment really is tuning the oscillator to the dial. You set your dial up, instructions will, you know, hopefully you got instructions for alignment. They'll tell you how to get the dial pointer adjusted. Then tune to a, a station that you know. You know, you know what frequency it is. Somewhere in the higher upper band it would be better, but any anywhere. And then you adjust the oscillator so it comes in good and it, it comes in right there where you got it tuned to and then 
the oscillator is adjusted. The antenna adjustment is like the IF. You adjust it for the loudest sound. Uh, now, beyond this equipment, a couple things that would become very handy. If you're working on a little radio like this, and this is one that I'll, I've gotten out that I'm going to start working on here after a bit. But this radio here has no transformer. All right. So now this one actually the chassis floats on, but some of these have no transformers, and your All American Fives are that way too. Um, the chassis could very well be hooked to one side of the power line. In any case, they're dangerous. Um, the one thing you want to do and really want to have to work on one of these is this, an isolation transformer of some sort. Um, any brand, anything, just long enough it's an isolation transformer. That isolates electrically this from your line. So you have less likelihood of, say, touching this, the chassis and then touching something else that, that you could get shocked. So I really, really strongly, if you don't have one, recommend that you do get one. Um, they're really valuable um, as far as your safety goes. And it, a lot of times you can pick them up, not real expensive. Uh, another thing is a dim bulb tester. Um, with a dim bulb tester, it, there's nothing to it. it it's just a, a plug and a light bulb and a light socket. You can build one for under $5. You can pick up a little porcelain socket or some sort of light socket for you know a buck and a quarter or something at your local home improvement. Uh, a plug-in. Um, you know, receptacle for what, 49 cents, 59 cents, something like that. Uh, and then just a cord of some sort to plug it in and the wiring to hook it up. The plug hooks in series with the light. And so that when you plug your radio in, the light bulb will be in series with your radio and the line. And what that does is, say you get done and you made an error somewhere and there's a dead short. Nothing's going to happen. All will happen is the light bulb will come on full brightness. But no smoke, no popping or no nothing, no arcing or anything else. So, and you know, you can build them real cheap. It's a great way of limiting your current and protecting your investment in the, in the radio that you rebuilt. Now, if you do want to move up and buy some more equipment, um, you know, a decent signal generator, something like this, or um, maybe, let's see, this guy here is a really nice one. These have not been going too high on uh, eBay, I've noticed. Um, either one of these two are really great. Uh, the nice thing about this is right here where it says 455 KC and 10.7 mega cycles. Um, those are sweep for the, the standard IFs for AM and FM. Um, but uh, it, then plus also it goes, it'll cover every, all the way up to over 40 megahertz. Uh, and you can sweep that if you need to. It also has internal modulation. <coughs> but these were actually designed for working on AM, FM radios and, and uh, aligning them. You can use a standard signal generator to do your alignment. And this also has internal modulation. You want something with either internal modulation or something that you can feed mod uh, audio signal into. Then another piece of equipment is a VTVM. There's a Junior Vonomus. There's a Master Vonomus. Don't matter. It can be Ike or anything. 
And uh, something I want to point out to anybody who has like uh, these uh, Volomas RCA um, branded BTVMs, if you didn't, if you got one and it did not come with the uh, the leads to it, uh, one thing you need to remember or know is the DC lead that was that did come with it had a built-in one meg ohm resistor. Now that wasn't for the AC or ohms, but only for the DC. Uh, Heath kit. Uh, that on theirs what they did was they made a, um, I don't have it out here but that on their end on their lead they had a little switch that switched back and forth I think on the senior Volnomus it was the same way you could switch the one meg in or switch it out but they absolutely when you're doing DC measurements they need that one meg ohm for the input impedance so if you got one and you didn't get the leads and you didn't know that, I, I'm telling you now that it needs that one meg ohm in it. Um, another piece of equipment that you might consider is, you know, something of this nature like the Cycle 950, a, a capacitor bridge, resistance capacitor bridge. Not so much to really, although this one, after I... Uh, redid it and then of course I got it set up pretty good it's actually extremely accurate um, but more importantly for checking leakage this will go up to about it says 500 volts it actually does about 525 um, real handy to checking capacitors and checking the leakage on them uh, these little things here that are they're all right for checking capacitance and stuff, but they're not, they, you know, I think this has got like a 9-volt battery in it, and that'd be about max it puts across. Well, if you've got a 400, 450-volt uh, electrolytic capacitor and you want to check it for leakage, uh, that's not going to do it. So that's another nice thing. Uh, the other thing about the signal generators is a frequency counter and these are pretty cheap the only reason I say about frequency counter uh, this thing is right on the money but some of the if you look at the scale real close so, you know some places here it's pretty wide like between 20 and 22 and, and if I needed like say for some reason it said get 20.25 that'd be real difficult to try to determine with the frequency counter, I can sit there and just turn it and rotate it until it says 20.25. Uh, you know, you don't, like I said, you don't really need a sweep generator. You can do alignment if you want to use signal generators and VTVMs. You can do it with those. Uh, I, instead of me doing videos on it, which I could, They've already been done, and one great place is B. Anderson TV. Uh, search his site, his YouTube site. He did uh, videos on doing both using a VTVM and a signal generator and also visual. Actually using one of these uh, in a oscilloscope. FM and AM alignments. So um, watch him. Uh, it's a, he's got a great site there for restoring, does great cabinet work, and does great electronics work. So, anyway, that was one of the main things I wanted to talk about was this stuff. And, uh, you know, to get you started, this is it right here. This will get you going. So, I'll be back making videos on, on a regular basis and we'll get back to tube theory and uh, we'll work on some AC and DC and, and troubleshooting and components and stuff. Until next time, thank you.